Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 1, Episode Home Soil, on, on Blu-ray. This is Day 20 of my 30 Days of Star Trek review, so 10 more to go after this one. This episode does something that I've often thought about, which is it talks about different forms of life other than like your normal carbon-based juicy life forms. Like you look at these other planets out there and you think like Jupiter or something where it's a gas giant. Like is there some creature that thrives getting blasted around and all that storm on a gas giant? Uh, or whatever. Are there other kinds of life forms? And so this episode has a cute little not carbon life form. All right, this is one of my most favorite things to discover in a show is somebody looking at the camera. So Troy here boop, is totally going to look right down the camera lens, right at me into the future from 1988 where she's at now into the future of right now. And I was watching the show just sitting there by myself and then all of a sudden she looked right at me and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's looking at me. So watch her eyes, see if you can catch it. If you don't, I'll do it in slow motion. But here she goes. Watch her eyes. I'd like to hope we'd be allowed to maintain that schedule. See we that? Him for see her looking at you? So she walks around Riker. She goes behind him. And then the camera scooches over a little bit so it can see her and Picard. Or as some people say in the show, Picard. Anyway... So she makes sure that she's cleared Riker and then the camera can see her. And she looks at it and then her eyes dart to the, to the, I guess, to her right. Because it's like, she's like, okay, the lens can see me. And then she's like, oh, I'm not looking at the lens. I'm looking over here. So check it out. Okay, so she's going to pop around the corner. Look at her eyes as she sits down. Okay, here it goes. Right there. Wait for it. Looked right into my soul. <sighs> so speaking of the cinematography in this episode, this this scene right here, this very short little transition, uh, uses something a little bit different. So what's going to happen is all, the camera is going to be moving in towards Picard or Picard, and uh, all of these people are going to be walking like right at the camera and then turning away. I don't think it's been done in this whole series. So take a look at it. It's kind of an interesting little little setup. It's kind of cute, actually. Counselor, perhaps you better go along as well. I see. Some of that tense can be very unpredictable. Stay on your toes, number one. Look at that. So you even have, like... So you have named characters walking right up to the camera and then dodging it. And then you even have just like no-name bodies just like crossing in front of his face. So that's kind of an interesting move. Look at this cool terraforming station. So it's on this kind of desolate planet and they're in there working on terraforming, which I think is a super fun concept. The real star of this terraforming, opera terraforming operation is this guy's mullet. Oh my gosh, look at it. Look at it. And third, the Enterprise. Where were you manufactured? Look at this thing. Other others like you. Both matters are subjects of protracted discussion. Remarkable. The glorious mullet. Excuse me. Look at that. Whoa, how? All right, maybe I'm reading too much into this, just because how my mind goes or how this show's been so far. But you've got the lead designer of the terraforming, who's now really, really sad. Uh, one, because one of their people has died. Two, because she's upset that all the work that they've done on terraforming is going to be lost because it's discovered that there's life on this planet and they're not supposed to terraform on planets with life, which is a little bit weird. It's like, can they not? Can there not be microbes? Can there not be plants and animals? They can't go enhance it? I don't know. Maybe because it, it would be disturbing the already existing climate of that creature but part of the prime directive is you can't do terraforming if there's already life on the planet so this lady's really sad that basically all her work is getting messed up and so troy so riker's gonna ask troy 
about how she perceived her. But look at what Troy says. And again, this might just be my brain immediately going to more base places or going to more Riker and like Kirk places. Watch this. How do you read the designer? She's possessed of highly abstracted reality, lovely visions, little data. But you might do better than I. What? Okay. So she's all sad. She's looking out the window. And Riker goes to her personal quarters and gets right up in her business. Mind a visitor? And so, like, right when they first met, like, Riker, his, like, eyebrows were going up. Like, I think he was totally smitten with this lady and her passion for the project, but mostly this lady. So... It's hard for me to not read into it based on what he's done so far and based on what Star Trek has done with, like, Kirk in the past. So I feel like Troy is sending him in there to, like, have his, like, manliness appeal to her. But re really, I don't know if he's just trying to comfort her and get some information out of her or what. But it just it just felt weird, literally weird, like, Troy being, like, the way she said it where she's like, you can go in there to her and maybe you can get some like have a desired effect and it was, it was a little weird i don't know you tell me if you think it's weird if you remember this episode so this the little life form they found is adorable it's just like a little blinking light um and the universal translators come online and look at what the little life form calls humans i think this is incredible the universal translator is coming online sir ugly ugly giant bags of mostly water Bags of mostly water. <laughs> An accurate description of humans, sir. You are over 90% water surrounded by a flexible container. I just, I love that. Bags of mostly water. That's such a good, <laughs> that's such a good description for a human. So I would say this episode, Home Soil, is, it's a pretty typical Star Trek episode where they, they talk about the Prime dir Directive. There's some kind of new life form that they make contact with. The new life form has like a little bit of scariness to it and they have to try and talk it down. But what's great about this episode is all of these wonderful actors just super taking these little glowing lights as a life form seriously and acting their best. Um, that's one thing that I've always enjoyed about Star Trek, like from the original series to this show is even in the hammiest episodes or even when they're just like, hey, this little light diode is a life and you have to be talking to it. Everyone takes it seriously and they give it their all. Um, so so I like the discussions of the Prime Directive and, l again, more exposition, kind of learning about the 24th century, like seeing a terraforming crew in action. So it's, it's just a good classic one. It's pretty mild. I mean, a dude gets, like, lasered to death at the beginning and he's, like, screaming and yelling behind a wall. I did have my two-year-old on the couch with me at that part. Sorry. Um, so, so little, little scary, but mostly pretty mild episode. So, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about this one. So thank you for watching. This has been day 20 of 30 of my 30 days of Star Trek reviews. So, um, stick with me. Let's look at the next one and please let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe.